Are you struggling with your OET writing? Are you feeling frustrated that you can never get the score that you need? Well, keep watching because I'm going to make it easy for you with a simple yet effective four-step guide to OET writing success. Welcome back to another video from Swoosh English. My name is Grace and I am your expert OET teacher. Now, many people struggle with OET writing for different reasons, such as not finishing on time, making language errors, or not including the right content. Well, if you follow the four step method outlined in this video, then OET writing should become a breeze. So let's get started. So this is OET Writing Made Easy, your step-by-step -step guide to success. Let me begin by introducing you to each of the four steps and then I'll go through them all in a bit more detail. So to start with, you have step one, which is read, step two, plan, step three, write, and step four, check. These are the steps that you're going to be taking to OET Writing success. Let's begin by talking about the first step, which is to read. Now, you may already know that the first five minutes of the OET writing test are just to read the task and to read the case notes. Now, it's very important that you use these five minutes wisely. If you know exactly what to do in those five minutes, you'll really be setting yourself up for success in the rest of the writing test. So how should you spend those first five minutes? First, you should read the task, which you'll find at the end of the case notes, and then skim the case notes. So skimming means moving your eyes quickly over the page, not focusing too much on understanding every single detail, but rather getting the main or overall idea. Next, you're going to ask yourself three questions. Who am I? Who is the reader? And what do they need to know? As this is going to help you to select the information to include in your letter. So then you can read the case notes again, this time more carefully. As you're reading them the second time, decide if each note is relevant to the reader. If so, how important is it? So at this stage, you're deciding which case notes you're going to include in your letter and also how important each note is, as this will help you later when you decide the order to present the information. And finally, you can identify notes to omit entirely. You should know that you're not going to include every single case note in your OET letter. So think about the information that's irrelevant and the information that you're not going to include in your letter. Now, once you've done that, you can move on to step two, which is to plan. Now, it can be very tempting to jump straight in and write your letter without first making a plan, but I really don't recommend this. If you spend time writing a plan, you're going to be much more focused and your letter is more likely to be effective and include all of the information in the correct order. So please do make sure you spend a couple of minutes before you start writing, planning the information and the order you're going to put it in. When you're planning your letter, then you're going to spend about two to three minutes. Make sure you're not writing in full sentences. Just keeping it to note form is absolutely fine. Your purpose for writing will go in the first subsection. So the first part of your plan will briefly include what your purpose is going to be. And then you'll decide the order of the rest of the information. So what will you put in the second, third, and maybe even fourth subsections? Remember, keep it in note form. You can choose the best structure for your reader. So that might involve starting with the medical history first. Alternatively, it could involve you beginning with the most recent information. Remember, this is going to depend on the task and your reader. Please do not use a template. Now, I know it can be very tempting to memorize a specific template and use it for all of your OET letters, but unfortunately, there are no shortcuts in OET. You cannot use a template. So make sure you choose the best structure for your purpose and your intended reader. So you've read the case notes, you've written your plan. Now moving on to step three, which is to actually write your letter. You're going to use your plan to help you write your letter and ensure that it is formatted correctly. This means starting with the address, including the correct date 
an appropriate opening and make sure you include that re-line with the patient's name and their date of birth. Once you've done all of that, you can move on to actually starting the main body of your letter and make sure you sign off correctly. Now, as you're going along, think carefully about your sentence length. Try to use a mix of simple and complex sentences. Check your use of tenses and also make sure you're using some connecting words or phrases to make your writing cohesive. After you've written each sentence, you can quickly read it over to check it for grammatical structure, any spelling or punctuation mistakes. But don't worry too much because we're going to do a more thorough check at the end. So just a quick check of each sentence after you've written it. Make sure your information is organized into clear subsections. If you've written a plan, this shouldn't be a problem. And ensure you end your letter appropriately. So that may be yours sincerely or yours faithfully, depending on how you opened your letter. So we've now written our letter. Moving on to step four, the final step of our process, which is to check. It's very important that you do leave time at the end to check as you don't want to lose easy marks with some simple language errors. So you're gonna spend around five minutes reading and checking your letter and ask yourself these questions. Is your spelling, punctuation and grammar accurate? Is the letter formatted correctly with the date, the address, and the correct use of your opening line. Is the purpose clear? Remember that needs to be clear in the very first subsection. Is the content accurate and relevant? Are all of your requests clear and polite? Make sure any requests that you've made have been made using polite language. And did you use an appropriate sign off at the end? So either yours faithfully or yours sincerely with your name. So these are some good questions to have in mind every time you write an OET letter. And during those final few minutes, you're just gonna ask yourself these questions to help you check that everything is correct and accurate. So that is our four step OET letter writing guide. And if you use that on a regular basis, you really will see an improvement in your OET letter writing. So I hope that you use it and I hope you find it useful. Now I'm going to leave you with some main takeaways from this video. The first one is use those five minutes preparation time wisely. Make sure you don't waste them. They are there for a reason. They are there to help you. Use that time to get familiar with the case notes and start thinking about what you're going to put in your letter. Number two, always plan your letter. It really will help you when you come to actually write the main subsections of your letter. It's so important that you have a plan that you can refer back to so that you know exactly what you're doing. Number three, always leave time at the end to check for mistakes that you may have made with language, but also to check things like the format, making sure the purpose is clear and you've included all of the information that you want to include. Number four, make sure you're familiar with the assessment criteria so that you know how you can get a high score in each section. And finally, get plenty of practice, especially with OET writing. It's so important that your letters are being read and checked by an expert OET teacher so that they can give you feedback on your areas of strength and the areas that you need to improve in. So make sure that you really are getting that feedback on a regular basis so you can be as prepared as possible for your OET writing test. If you're looking for more support with your OET preparation, then head on over to our website, www.swooshenglish.com and take a look at our OET preparation courses. They have everything you need to get you prepared for and passing your OET exam quickly including those all important writing corrections. So you have the opportunity to submit your OET letters to our team of expert teachers so that you can receive their corrections and feedback. It really is the best way to improve your OET writing skills. So hopefully I will see you in a class very, very soon. Until then, happy studying everyone and goodbye.